Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Robert Coho Epstein. Greetings, all. Um, so, as much as I love complex and esoteric topics, um, I've picked something a little more basic to talk about tonight. Um, we're living in very chaotic times. It seems like hatred and division uh, are having a field day and maybe a defining characteristic of this uh, period. And this all goes in the opposite direction of Buddhism, which stresses, I think, a peaceful and mindful approach to living and stresses our deep connection with each other as living beings. So in a sense, you could say that things are not going well. But there's always conflict in the human world. There are many things in the Buddhist teachings that are a kind of medicine for specific aspects of living. And I thought it would be a good time, given everything that's happening, to go back to one of my favorite subjects of Buddhist basic and talk about the first three of the four immeasurables which uh, constitute the Buddhist version of love or loving. Um, and in a world that seems very divided, the first three of the four immeasurables, those forms of love, give us a way of getting in touch with our connection with each other. And I'll leave the fourth way pretty much aside for this talk, but it is equilibrium and it gives us a way of being steady and maintaining our, ourselves in a balanced state through troubled and turbulent times. So it's definitely related. So in Buddhism, to go to a slightly different place for a second, there are three poisons identified. In their more dramatic form, they're sometimes translated as greed, hatred, and delusion, and they sound pretty bad. Um, in a simpler classification, uh, that's a little more generic, they're sometimes translated as, the first two are sometimes translated as uh, desire and aversion. Um, wanting and not wanting. Uh, the poison that we're focusing on here is the second one, hatred or aversion. We are, find ourselves at odds with certain people or certain groups of people, we're on the opposite side of the fence, um, we don't get along with certain people, we don't like the way certain people behave, and so we reject them and separate from them. And even in our personal relationships with people that we do like and accept and have uh, relationships with, friendships with, or our family members, uh, they can always get on our bad side or do something that we don't like, and there's always the possibility of a little aversion or dislike creeping into our relationships, even the positive ones. So in a sort of an obvious way, we can deduce that the antidote for hatred is love. And in the three first immeasurables, we encounter the Buddhist version of love. Uh, the three types of love promoted by the Buddha are connected to each other. And I, I like them as a set because um, they have an interesting relationship to each other. And between them, they really don't leave any room for hatred or dislike of other beings, and they're kind of a curative when those feelings arise. The three forms of love in Buddhism are metta, or loving kindness, karana, or compassion, and mudita, or sympathetic joy. You may recognize compassion in the middle there, as the most familiar of the three forms of love because compassion is a major or maybe the major quality that is stressed in Mahayana Buddhism of which Zen is a part. And the Bodhisattva vow to save all beings from suffering relates directly to compassion. But loving kindness is the root of compassion. It's not paid quite as much attention outside of Theravada Buddhism. And sympathetic joy doesn't get a lot of uh, comment, even though I think it's very noteworthy. So loving kindness is the most basic kind of love in Buddhism. It denotes our care and embrace of all living beings. 
if we get annoyed or impatient or feel that someone is not our kind of person or we like cute little kittens but we hate Nikki spiders, uh, loving kindness teaches us to accept and include all those beings, even the ones we think we don't like, and see our connection with them because we're really connected to all living things and have much in common with them. There's a lovely meditation in this regard that was highly praised by the Buddha in which we start with ourselves, which we often leave out, allowing ourselves to fill up with the energy of loving kindness, care and acceptance, and then project that caring energy towards an ever increasing circle of beings. We can kind of do that all at once and just have a general projection to all living beings, or we can do more specific work with metta and start with people that we care about and project loving kindness to them and then go out to further and further groups that we may not know as personally and then there's the advanced exercise that's always fun of picking people that we really don't like or that we're mad at or that we don't think are good people and projecting loving kindness to them and that's a that's a nice exercise because it processes a lot of our negativity that we really don't want to hold on to and we can also see the good in people even if we are at odds with them um so let's just take a second take a couple of breaths to just feel or contemplate the sense of loving kindness for all beings and just have a feeling of that energy for a moment Okay, so even if we think people might not be great people, one way to combat evil is to overwhelm it with love rather than hating the people back. And, um, and so instead of generating the poison of hatred, we embrace and transform people who maybe going down the, the wrong path with loving kindness. And that's the approach of Thich Nhat Hanh and the Dalai Lama, which they've practiced very consistently for many decades. If we do cultivate our sense of loving kindness, caring and loving acceptance for all beings, it naturally leads to the development of compassion. Compassion is loving kindness for beings that are suffering. When we see someone in pain, we have a sense of empathy for their troubles and a desire to help them if we can. And that comes out of our feeling of connection and caring for them. We can also generate a sense of peace and equanimity in our meditations towards beings who are troubled and wish peacefulness and awakening from suffering for them, dedicating any merit that we may generate to beings who need support. All of that is part of compassion, caring for those in need, both in our minds and hearts, and when possible, through our actions. The third form of love in Buddhism goes along with the first two, uh, mudita, or sympathetic joy. When beings are troubled, we respond with compassion, but we don't think as much about how we respond to people when they're successful and doing well. And Buddha covered that territory as well and encouraged us to be happy with them and be happy for them rather than being resentful or envious or thinking to ourselves, well, those people didn't really deserve that. And it would be better if I had it. Um, so it's easy to have sympathetic joy for your child when they get a good grade. But what about the kid who always gets A's? Do we feel sympathetic joy for them? Are we happy for them? because they're very successful? And what about the, the kid who has learning difficulties and does winds up getting a B after studying really hard? Do we think about them and have joy for their achievement? So sympathetic joy is a universal uh, joyfulness over beings who may struggle and overcome things and, and have success and actually have uh, achievements and accomplishments and are happy at that time. So we have loving kindness for all beings. We have care and compassion and empathy for beings who are troubled and we have sympathetic and 
resonant joy for those who are doing well or who accomplish something. If we are joyful for the good fortune and success of everyone, then we always have a reason to be joyful and we can be happy all the time. Um, even though we may be sad that beings are suffering, we can also be joyful for beings that are, are experiencing happiness and success. Sun-faced Buddha, moon-faced Buddha, all in balance. In all these three uh, cases, the kind of love that's generated by these circumstances, we're generating love, not hate, acceptance, not rejection, and connection, not separation, with other beings around the world. Cultivating these three conditions and projecting and generating them uh, to others will lead to a happier world. And one more note, you may notice that these three loving qualities are not about ourselves and are not about one person over another, loving this person because they're really special, but this other person not so much. They're impersonal and universal, but they become very personal to us when we take them on and practice them. Thank you. <laughs>